Hi guys, I'm back. It's been almost three weeks since I did my last tutorial, um, but I'm back. I just needed a break, guys. I just needed time out from this for a little while. Um, but I'm back and I'm looking forward to doing this video. And today I'm going to do what they call a dendritic agate. Um, and what you're going to need for that, and I'm, I'm using a mixture of um, Primo clays and Cernic clays today. So I've rolled out um, a piece of Cernit white opaline, and this is rolled on my thickest setting on my pasta machine, which is a zero. That's just for one, to one side for now. And then I've got some Cernit translucent, just a little chunk. And then I've got some Primo white um, gold glitter again just a little chunk and some primo black a little chunk and then I've got um, some more of the primo white gold glitter and I use this square to cut to cut it out so they're all equal squares, squares and this is a one and a half inch square and that's the the white gold glitter this is primo bronze and primo copper all rolled out onto a number six and then here I've got some Cernit translucent, just a strip of it, um, rolled onto a number four. And then here I've got three squares of Primo White rolled onto a number eight. So these are quite thin. Nine is the thinnest setting on my um, pasta machine. And then I've got some more translucent squares rolled out onto a number four. Now there's quite a lot going on in this. I'm making up different elements for the um, the piece that I want to show you. But to start off with, I'm just going to move these over out of the way a little bit. So I've got some room. But keep these separate from each other. These are all going to go together. That's going to go together and those other pieces are going to go together as separate elements. You'll also need um, some kind of pokey tool. I've just got some ball tools here, a brush, <clears throat> and I'm also using some Cernit alcohol ink and this is the navy blue. So we'll start with that first just so we can get it out of the way and let it dry. And I'm just going to put a few drops on this strip and you need enough clay to make four equal squares so it's a rough estimate I've just rolled out whatever and I'm just putting quite a few drops on there. there's probably seven or eight drops of that on there and I'm just gonna rub it over the clay with my brush like that and I'm just gonna let it dry I'm not mixing it into the clay it's gonna sit on the surface doesn't matter if it's um, a perfectly even coat but just brush it on there make sure you cover the whole strip and I'm just going to let that dry so I'm just going to quickly wash my brush just with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a wet wipe just to get that out get my blade make some room and I'm just going to take this strip and put it to one side so it can dry so that's as easy as that for that little bit and just wipe up a little bit okay I'm just going to move these over as well out of the way the backings for later and we're going to focus on this little bit as well oh and you're also going to need some liquid translucent clay and also some white mica powder pearl white mica powder so some liquid translucent clay as usual I forget something but there you go right so I'm just going to take those three little blocks that I talked about at the beginning and I'm just going to chippy choppy them up it's as simple as that really but I want quite small pieces so I'm just going to get it started fairly small pieces and I'll probably cut back through it again once I've added the mica powder 
so that's that little pile and you probably won't even need that much to be honest but you can just make a small block of it guys these are just approximate amounts really you can make as much of this as you want I've already practiced this and I did a huge amount <laughs> um, so I've kind of downsized it a little bit and you could just throw all that into the mix and then again with the black and I want the black even smaller to be honest with you so I'm just gonna quickly chippy choppy this up It's all going to get chopped again, but I'm just getting it going. And then I'm just going to throw all that in the mix and give it a good old tumble, like so. You can break any bits off that have stuck together, but not too worried. I'm going to take my pearl mica powder, white pearl mica powder. I'm just going to grab another brush. And I don't want a great deal of this. This is just to help the chunks of clay separate a little bit. So I've just brushed a little bit of that on. Give it another tumble. And then I am going to go back in and chop it again because I want this to be quite a bit smaller. It just helps when you've added the mica powder to separate those chunks a little bit and then you can chop again, tumble again because there's always a little bit of powder left there just to help separate it again and chop my way through it. I don't want fine crumbs, I just don't want big pieces. another little mix and another chop and I think we're about there with that and I think that's good okay so simple chippy choppy small chippy small chunk chippy choppy and I'm going to get my liquid clay now, translucent liquid clay. This is Sculpey, but I've also got Kato. I'm just using the Sculpey for this. It doesn't really matter which one you use for this. Give it a good old squirt of that. And then mix it all together. Get it all nicely coated. And then form it into a block. I'm just going to clean my hands off a little bit so they're less sticky and then form it into a block like I say you don't need a huge amount or you can make as much as you want depends how many pieces you want to make okay so when you've got it all together Got all those little stray bits. Just form it into a more of a rectangle than a square, I think. At this point, anyway. But then what I'm going to do, I'm not going to leave it there. This is um, what I call my chippy choppy on steroids because I'm going to chop into it again. Just wiping my hands off guys so I'm going to get my blade again and I'm just going to cut into this lengthways like this and then chippy choppy it lengthways like this and then kind of just stack it all back on top of itself and just keep cutting through like so So we're not really keeping those 
um, pieces of clay chunky they're getting more kind of cut into lengthways if that makes sense and I'm just cutting through and then I'm kind of just stacking it back on itself and cutting again and that's all you need to do Get another little slice and do the same thing and then just pile it on top of the rest of it and then same with this and just keep doing that hence the name Chippy Choppy on steroids Okay, so when you've done that, form it back into a block and you might feel like you want to go chop it through another time. So I'm just quickly going to form this back into a block and I think I want to cut through it again. So same thing, I'm just taking little slices, cutting through it lengthways and then just kind of piling it on top of what's already there. Like so so there's a lot of chopping so yeah um, I decided to take a break I was getting a little bit stressed with everything not gonna lie um, my brain just didn't want to cooperate I couldn't think of anything particularly fresh to make and so I decided just to take a few weeks off from doing this and I've really not um, other than this the practice run for this and maybe a couple of other pieces I've not really played with my clay I just I don't know I just wanted time out guys but I did go away for a few days with hubby so that was a nice break and I'm back at my desk because I can't stay away for too long. I always get the itch, so to speak. All right, so I think that's chopped enough. So I just went <clears throat> through that um, block, you know, two times. And now I'm forming it back. But I'm keeping it as a rectangle. I'm not going to form it into a square. And it's just a rough little block. It's, there's nothing really that precise about it. And there we go, that's the first little segment done. I'm just making sure it's all nicely stuck together. And I think that's good. Okay, so there's your little rectangle of Chippy Choppy. Just going to give my hands another wipe because they're a little sticky from playing with that. And now we'll move on to the next element. And you're going to need your white gold glitter, bronze, and copper. And also the strip that I put alcohol ink on, which doesn't look like it's completely dry, but I'm I'm not too worried. I'm going to go ahead anyway. And I'm just going to cut some equal squares of that out as well. like so like so like so didn't cut through particularly great but oh well just get rid of the excess and like I say it's still a little bit wet you can be more patient than me and let it dry if you want to but I'm not too worried okay so remember these ones are on a six but the blue ones are on a number four okay so I'm just literally going to stack them and making a very simple makume gane I mean I looked at these stones and again they vary um, because stones do and I just kind of took elements from ones that I saw and thought I'd put them together um, and this is what I came up with so I'm going to start with the blue at the bottom and the rest is pretty random I'm not too 
bothered where they go to be honest I'm just stacking them guys very simple like so and I think it's always good to have the darker colour on the top so when you do your makume some of that gets pushed through so a very simple stack and I'm going to get my fingers all inky again I'm going to get my roller give it a quick roll flip it roll it from the other side so it catches up with itself and then I'm going to cut it in half restack like so and I think that's all I'm going to do I'm not going to roll it and stack it any more than that all right so that's a simple little block I'm just gonna again make it more rectangular than square make sure it's all stuck together I'm just going to get my um, ball tools you can do as many of these in this as you want to but I'm just literally pushing these through and I might even kind of drag it a little bit here and there like so so it's not even round anymore I'll do another one just push it down like so and you can put some smaller ones in whatever you fancy it's just a very very simple makume like so and I think that's good and then I'm just gonna squash it back together again a little bit close those holes up a bit get the roller on it I don't even care if it doesn't close all the way back guys to be fair I'm just going to reshape this a little bit get it back into a more rectangle shape like so Give it a little mush, give it a little squeeze. And I think that's fine. So that's the second little element that we're going to be using in the stone. Okay. Then we won't then we're going to these um translucent pieces. These are rolled out onto a number four, but the white is rolled out onto a number eight. And all we're gonna do is literally stack them white. Well, it's trans white, trans white, trans white, and trans. That's it. Simple as that. Basic little stack. Form it all into a little block again. Make sure it's all stuck together. Give it a little roll. Don't worry about the ink that gets on there. Just roll it out, cut it in half. We're not putting any impressions in this. We're using this as little lines like that. And it's as simple as that. I've made the I looked at the stone and there was a couple of ways I could have gone about it. Um in my practice run, I'll explain in a minute what I did. But I decided to change it just a little bit. I I'll explain. It's just easier if I explain rather than show you rather than talk what I did in my 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 practice run is I got exactly the same colors and everything else the same thicknesses of squares and all the rest of it but instead of rolling out a backing sheet which is what I'm going to do now um, I formed some of the Cerny opaline into little blocks like this as well I did a couple of little blocks of opaline and then all I did was I did the opaline block and then you know stacked each component into a one big block and then compressed it and, and sliced it down and took the slices off that way you could do it that way if you wanted to but um, I decided to go this route because it gives you a little bit more control um, of where to place each of those elements and the reason I decided I liked it that way is because when I get got to the end of my block I had a few little scraps left and I just rolled out some opaline and placed them where I wanted to and I preferred it that way so I will show you the other ones and it's just a case of literally 
you know, stacking on top of each other um, and forming a block that way. And as you go in along, kind of put a few little divots in here and there and then stack and divot again and stack. Just play with it. You can put the pieces wherever you want to, but I'm doing it this way because I honestly preferred it. I'm just going to give my hands a quick wipe, get some of that inky blue off me. Okay, so yeah, I'm doing it this way and I hope my my brief explanation of the other way made sense. But I'm, I preferred it this way, guys, so that's why I'm doing it this way. So I'm going to take my backing clay and I'm going to take a little bit of this chippy choppy first and I'm just going to take fairly thin slices like so. And I probably don't even need all of that in one go and I'm literally just going to place it wherever I think looks good and I can shape it you know I can curve it up like this like so and then I'm going to take my Makume Gane and obviously you're going to take the, the shavings from the top like you normally would not not you know not this way but this way from the top just a typical Makume Gane and I'm looking for my other blade. I thought I had it, but now I can't find it. Let's see if this one works. And I'm just going to take thin slices off my Makume and get some pretty little patterns from doing that. And as you cut down, you're going to see more of that pattern and some of those lovely colours coming through. There's a little bit more bronze in that one. So you can just play around with it and see what you like and where you want to place each individual element, so to speak. We'll get into some silver here, which I think looks really pretty. Let's take a little sliver of that. So I've just cut a few pieces. I'm not going to use all of this on camera but just to show you what I mean. So you've just got a typical Makume Gane stack with those colours and those measurements that I gave you. And then all I'm going to do is take some little pieces that I like and I'm just going to place them on my opaline backing like so. And I can give them a little stretch here and there. Um, and you just play around so you can decide what, what you want to put where and now I'm having a hard time deciding guys <laughs> all right so I think I'll put you don't even have to use the whole strip you could just do little bits like this and it's fine to overlap them as well this is all going to get burnished nice and flat so again this pattern will smush a little bit and spread out which is what you want but like I say you can stack and it doesn't even have to be you know, stack, stack, stack. You could do a little bit of chippy choppy, just half, and then line up some of the lined translucent next to it, you know. But I did build it in a block like this. I hope I'm making sense, but I did build it in a block like this with the opaline thrown in, and then I just cut down. But I prefer it this way, to be honest, for this stone anyway. Okay, so. I'm rambling. Let's take a little thin random shaped piece of this translucent and just pop it here. The white and translucent lines like so. That's good. I'm going to take another little strip of the Makume and I'm just going to tear a little piece off like so. And I'm going to put that at a different angle like that and I'm just going to keep doing that until I'm happy with what I've got but I do want to leave quite a bit of the opaline left open so I'm not covering the whole piece with my pieces whoops that broke off but that's fine I'm just going to pop that there so I've just got a little bit peeking through just there and that's all you do guys it's I've made it as simple as possible and I hope it's uh, 
going to look as good as my other ones when I finished. And I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to plop it there. Now I'm going to just get rid of some of this. I don't want to get this dirty and obviously I'm not showing you that many pieces on camera but you get the idea. So you're just placing them wherever you see fit guys like that. Um, I mean it takes longer doing it this way than just stacking you know in a big block and cutting through but I just preferred it. Right do I need anything else on there or am I good? Let's just pop a little bit more of this on here because that's kind of interesting. Stretch it out a little bit. It's okay if it breaks. It's okay if they overlap a little bit. And you've got separate elements here. You don't even have to do this. You've got a block of Makume if you just want to do Makume. You've got a chippy choppy. But they're cool elements for this stone. I hope that all makes sense. All right, so I'm just going to leave it at that for this one. I'm going to get some paper and pop it on some paper and another piece of paper. That's a bit dirty. A bit of clean piece. Give it a good burnish. Actually, I'm going to roll it first. I just want to stretch out some of these little elements just a little bit. Like so. And then I'm going to burnish. And you can be as minimalistic as you want with this. You could just put tiny little amounts on. These stones all vary and some of them were more patterned like this one's going to be. Or you can be minimalistic and just put little tiny fragments of each element on there. I think I probably will make another pendant just to see, just for comparison. Um, so you know what I mean. I'm just going to give this a burnish with my steel soap. This is listed in my Amazon storefront. Link is in the description. It's ideal for burnishing, getting everything nice and smooth and level. And you can just feel with your fingers afterwards. Just a little bit more, I think. Like so. Give it a feel. And that feels good. All right, so there's the first little slab and I'm going to get my Oh Joy Creation Cutters of Choice I will list her shop in the description and I'm going to go about here I think with this one and I can get another pendant down here but doing it this way just gives you a little bit more control so there we go that's why I did it that way and I'm probably going to dome this piece and as usual I've left my doming implement upstairs but I will show you once it's baked. So there's the first piece and obviously it's going to look different again once it's baked. Um, let's pick another shape. Which one do I want? Let's go with this one. I'm actually going to give this one a little bit of a clean before I cut it. wet wipe and rubbing alcohol, isopropyl al alcohol, like so, give it a rub, there's a little splodge of blue there that I'm not too keen on but I guess it doesn't matter a great deal, stones will be stones. Alright so I'm going to get this shape, again this is a No Joy Creations cutter, I love it. Where do I want it to go? I think I am just going to go straight up with this one. Like that. Get my block. Give it a good old push. Good old wiggle. Make sure it's gone all the way through. And there is a little bit of waste. But guess what guys? Chippy choppy. Or you could just roll it up and make a backing from it. Whichever. I tend to do both and there's that piece and that's looking rather pretty 
very simple. I'm just going to give these another quick wipe. But like I say, I'm going to dome the round one, but I've left my domey thing upstairs. But when, when I've baked them, I'll show you anyway. Okay, so that's those two, and that one lost its shape a little bit. If that happens, just get your blade and just you can just straighten it off again, like so. Alright, guys, so there's two pendants, and that one's got quite a bit of the pattern on it. So I am just going to quickly roll out some more of this opaline that I can cut away that I've got left and just roll it out. Take it onto my thickest setting. You don't have to do them that thick if you don't want to. But because I'm not going to put resin on these, I'm not going to add any thickness to them. So I'm starting off um, with a thicker piece of clay. All right, so let's take a little bit of this again. Just a little bit. It doesn't even have to be in a straight line. And just place it on there and you can just do little tiny pieces of each thing so there's just a hint a hint of it and you can just tear pieces off like this I'm just gonna pop that there oops that one stuck to my finger that will do put that there the other thing you could do and I've just thought about this I'm gonna grab a little bit of um, Cernit Trans here And I'm going to roll this out very thin, very thin, onto probably a number six, I think might be thin enough. So I've got an, a, another little piece of trans. I think, I hope this is the trans and not the opaline. <laughs> this might be the opaline actually. It's very difficult to tell the difference. No, this is the translucent, definitely. All right, so this is a little bit more um, Cernit translucent, rolled onto a six. And I'm just going to take little strips of that and I'm going to place it partly over um, that one element there and over here as well. Don't worry about it looking like a dog's dinner to start with because it's all going to get burnished but I'm just showing you that you can overlap as long as you've got your translucent thin enough and that probably could have been a little bit thinner but I've done it now. So let's get another piece of this Makume and just tear a little piece off and just add a little bit of that under there and pop that translucent over that as well so this is just a little bit of um, layering going on just gives it a little bit of a different look whoops sticking to me and I'm just gonna pop that down there like so so I haven't got as much on that one but can you see what I mean guys you can play around with it and I, that's why I really like that stone every single piece that I looked at varied in terms of you know how much patterning was on there right I'm just going to give this a quick roll just to make sure it's on there good and can you see what I mean that piece of trans has now gone over this little bit of makume but when it's baked you're still going to see it but it's not going to be as vibrant as this if that makes sense and it just gives it a little bit more depth so you can do that as well. Give this a good old burnish again. Get my steel soap. Like so. And there's, that's, what, that's what you can do with this. And there's loads left to play with. 
Right, I need to pick out a different... Actually, I'm going to put that back on my tile because I need it to stick. Because this one is a bit awkward. The clay tends to get stuck in it if I don't put it on my tile. So roll that out, make, it, make sure it's on my tile. Bit of uh, alcohol, give this a quick wipe. Actually, I don't know whether to use this one, because if I do, I'm not going to get that cool bit in up there, am I? I think I'm going to add a little bit more, guys, to this. So I'm going to take some of that makume again, but not that bit. I want this bit. Oops. And I'm just going to pop that here. I suppose I could use a different cutter. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to use a different cutter. I've changed my mind. Um, I'm just going to get a little bit more of that trans that I rolled out pretty thin. And I'm just going to pop that on top of there like that. Just to layer it up a tiny, tiny bit. Give that a burnish. And I think I'm going to use a different cutter. It's nice and smooth. Um, what cutter do I want to use? I've got the round one, the diamond shaped one. How about this one? And I can do something else up there then. Hmm. I'm actually going to get another piece of trans. See what I mean about this, guys? You've got so much more freedom and you can play around with it. And just, you know, fiddle around like this until you're happy. Rather than slice, taking a slice off a block and then you're kind of stuck with that, whatever the pattern is. Yeah, that's better. In my opinion, anyway. Okay, right. Let's try and get every little bit of that element in there. Those elements in there. And I think that's good. So this one's less patterned. Well, there's more open spaces on it, I should say. Whereas these ones, I kind of put the pattern closer together. The pattern's more spread out on this one. Which I think is going to look pretty cool when I've baked it. I've still got this little bit left and I want to use that. So I'll add a little bit more to that and then I'll call it a day. Okay, so there's that one as well. That's the difference. So I've still got this little bit left. So I'm going to add a little bit more to it. I'm just going to get a cutter to make sure I'm going to be able to fit it all on. That one's probably a bit too wide. I keep banging my head on the camera. <laughs> um, hmm. This is where I don't... Actually, that's quite nice. Let's go with this elongated one. Again, that's a No Joy Creations cutter. All right, let's see. I'm going to get my stripes again. And just take a little bit off. And just pop that over there, like so. And shall we add a little bit more makume on this one? I'm just going to slice into this. It was a little thick. You can pick which side looks the best. Like so. Let's add another little bit of chippy choppy. And my camera is about to die on me, so I'm going to have to be quick. I thought I charged it more than this. Oops. Okay, I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to get a little piece of the trans just to overlap it a little bit 
I'm going to roll it out and I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to go and bake them. And I'm saying this really quick because my battery is about to die on me. So I hope that it was easy to understand, guys. I really wanted to do a faux stone, but I didn't want anything too complicated. And it took me a while to figure it out, obviously. But once I got it, it's pretty straightforward, don't you think? Alright, so I'm just going to cut that out there and that's four lovely pieces I've made and there's loads left to play around with and like I say you don't even have to make that stone with them you can do whatever you want with those pieces all right guys I'm going to go because my battery's going to die but I'm going to go and put these in the oven I'm going to bake them on 275 which is Primo's temperature to cure Cerna is only 265 but um it's fine to bake them at the higher temperature. You need to bake at the higher temperature to ensure that the Primo actually cures. Clay doesn't burn at temperatures under 350 Fahrenheit. So, all right, guys, there's the pieces. I might make some more. I'll go and bake them and I'll be back. All right, guys, I baked them. And this is the round one that I made. I absolutely love how this one came out. And I really like the strength of that blue as well. Obviously, you can um, put less alcohol ink to make a lighter blue if you want. But I personally really love that blue. And all I did was sand and buff this one all over. I did a pinch bail and a simple black cord. So there's that one. Love it. And then, what was the other ones that I did? Oh yeah, this one. I, again, sanded and buffed this one. But I haven't finished it yet, but there's that piece as well. The only thing that's bugging me is that little blue speck. I don't know if you can see it just there. But if that happens, what you could do is grab, you know, one of the elements that you made and just take a little bit off and cover it over and rebake it. I might do that with this one. But there's that one. And then the ones that I did... with more of an open space on them. I um, resined these ones. I haven't finished them, obviously. I just resined the fronts, sanded the edges at this point. I'll probably, oh, I did resin the back. Yeah, resined and glittered the backs on these ones. I resined these ones because they felt a little bit thinner than these ones. So I wanted some more, you know, rigidity in those. So there's that one. I really love how that came out as well. So there's that one. And then this one as well. And I love that one. I love all of them, actually. They're really nice. Resined and glittered on the back. I do have a video on how I do that, the resin and the glitter. And also, um, I show how to sand and buff. I'll leave a link for that video in the description. But there are all the pieces from that batch. And um, you just need to do this exactly the same thing that I did in my video. But if you wanted to do it where you actually... Um, stack all those elements up together and create one big block and then just take the slices off this is how it's going to look there isn't a great deal of difference really it's just that you're going to get that more or less same uniform pattern running through I prefer the freedom of placing the pieces where I want but you know that's those pieces as well and there is actually less blue in this I just didn't make the um I didn't use as much alcohol ink on these, but they're still pretty cool. So there's those ones as well. Um, just a simple pinch bail on that one. Again, pinch bail and black cord on this one. I haven't fully decided how I'm going to dress them. I just did these quickly for the video. And then last but not least, this is from yesterday's batch. I did another one. Sanded and buffed, and again, I just placed the pieces, you know quite sparingly but I, again I love this one as well and I've just added a, a piece of cotton cord and a bead I just need to finish the ends all right guys so they're the pieces I hope it made sense I hope you enjoyed it I'm so happy to be back thank you for watching and I will catch you later bye